In this video, you'll see the incredible comeback story in the 2018 Golden Globe race by Istvan Kopar, who went from kicked out of the race to last to fourth place and the only American to finish the race. Watch all the way to the end to see how he did it. Subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing so you can see the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world, such as the youngest participant in the Golden Globe race, Susie Goodall, and her dismasting in the Southern Ocean. On March 21st, after 263 days at sea, Istvan Kopar was a fourth participant out of 18 to finish the Golden Globe race. He went from last place to fourth, the biggest jump of any finisher in the Golden Globe race. When Istvan Kopar was restored to the race on day 27, he trailed Mark Sinclair of Australia, who would retire in his home, Adelaide, Australia. He was behind Loic LePage, who would retire in Cape Town in need of water. He was behind Avalash Tommy, who would be rescued in the Southern Indian Ocean after a severe back injury. He was behind Uku Randama, who would finish before him in third place. He was behind Igor Zaretsky, who would retire in Australia due to barnacles on his hull. He was behind Tapio Lenitin, who Istvan would pass because Lenitin refused to chip off the barnacles on his hull. He was behind Gregor McGuckin, who would retire from the race after he was dismasted in the southern Indian Ocean. He was behind Susie Goodall, the youngest participant in the race, who would be rescued in the South Pacific Ocean after her Rustler 36 was dismasted. He was behind fourth place Ari Wig, who he would pass because Wig lost his mast before passing Cape Town. Wig retired in Cape Town under jury rig. The only people he did not pass were Rhonda Ma, Slats, and John Luke Vandenheed. But he would also pass number one racer, Philip Peche, who would retire in Cape Town because of similar steering issues and excessive satellite phone usage like Istvan Kopar. In all, he passed eight boats to be the fourth Golden Globe racer to finish in Le Sable de Lone, France. The Golden Globe race is a retro race, which prohibits the use of GPS or satellite phone technology except in emergency circumstances or to communicate with race headquarters. Istvan Kopar is the fourth finisher to have been sanctioned by the GGR race rules Three of the four, including Kopar, were sanctioned for illegal satellite phone usage, and the other, Uku Randaba, was sanctioned for prohibited weather routing. All the first four finishers faced potential expulsion from the event, as did the former first place racer, Philip Peche, suffered when he used his satellite phone. Instead, they served time penalties at sea and at the finish. The Golden Globe race had originally 18 skippers at the start, but many dropped out in the Atlantic Ocean, and only four boats have finished and one more is still sailing 4,000 miles behind, skippered by Finnish sailor Tapio Lenenton, who has been plagued by barnacle problems. His boat is near Brazil in the southern hemisphere, nearly 4,000 miles away, when Istvan Kopar finished after over 263 days at sea. Day 27, Istvan Chichester class consideration. On 17th July, Istvan called GGR chairman on his sat phone to declare to Chichester class. This was accepted. Istvan asked for messages to be passed to his USA manager to order a new wind vane and ship by air to Cape Verde. Istvan requested navigation advice on the best port to proceed to in Cape Verde. Only based on Istvan's declared move to 
the Chichester class, did GGR comply with both requests as a sat phone may not be used in any form of assistance for a GGR entrant other than in an emergency? Notice of race 3.14. Subsequently, two days later, on the 19th of July, Istvan appears to have second thoughts about Cape Verde stop. A new wind vane would not be delivered until 31st July at the earliest, and this could have been a factor. Istvan stopped at UTC 600 hours on the 23rd of July in Mindeo Port on Anchor. He received no outside assistance and departed at approximately UTC 2100 hours on the 24th of July. GGR entrants may not enter any port. Notice of race 3.15. Istvan has now accepted his status as Chichester class sailor, but requests reconsideration due to the stress affecting his decision and that no material advantage was gained through his actions. Breach of rules and notice of race, requesting and accepting non-emergency assistance on the sat phone, and two, entering a port. Mitigating circumstances, Istvan was under stress from hand steering due to a faulty wind vane. In a phone conversation on the 19th of July, he is clearly confused even about making emergency distress satellite phone calls being allowed. The responsibility for understanding notice of race rules rests with the entrance. The issue of sat phone use has been covered by GGR over the past two years in extreme detail in, in conference briefings, emails, publications, and two very comprehensive full-day safety seminars in the weeks leading up to the start of the GGR. Findings. GGR may make exceptions in the application of the rules. Notice of race 3.2. In the spirit of the GGR and accepting stress may have confused Istvan on rule interpretation and the basis that no real or material advantage advantage has been provided to Istvan through the inappropriate use of his satellite phone and that his stop in port and alternate time penalty has been decided. For breaching notice of race 3.14 satellite phone use, an 18-hour time penalty is given. For breaching notice of race 3.15, a six-hour time penalty has been given. Istvan will now move from Chichester class back into GGR entrance status. Istvan Kopar is a 66-year-old Hungarian-born American. He's a professional sailor and a U.S. Coast Guard licensed captain who has logged more than 60,000 nautical miles sailing solo. His proudest accomplishment prior to the race was his solo one-stop circumnavigation in 1990 to 1991 without the aid of GPS. He relied on a sextant, manual chart plotting, and weather forecast broadcasts in Morse code. Sailing a 31 foot boat that he had built himself, Istvan completed the voyage in record time for the size of his yacht. Istvan also skippered the winning yacht in the 1996-97 Hong Kong Challenge Around the World Yacht Race. He was among the top finishers in the 1992 500 Columbus Transatlantic Race and won the Capri's Trophy in the 1995 Atlantic Rally for Cruisers arc. He says of the GGR, This race is custom made for me. My first hero and role model was Joshua Slocum, the first recorded solo circumnavigator. He had no land support, no modern navigation and communication devices, or even a mechanical wind vane. He was the real deal. And he was able to accomplish this historic achievement due to his upbringing and constant connection with the oceans and sailing. Istvan's boat is number 37, Puffin, a Tradewind 35 cutter, a John Rock design built by Tradewind Yachts Netherlands. LOA 35 feet, length on the waterline 20 six feet, beam of ten and a half feet, draft of five and a half feet, displacing just under 20,000 pounds or 9,000 kilograms. And it has 725 square feet of sail area. Istvan purchased the 1986 built Tradewind Classic Yacht Puffin in 2015 to compete in the GGR. Istvan and his team have since stripped the inside and outside of the boat and added more layers of fiberglass to improve her durability. Other modifications included decreasing the size of the cockpit, improving its drainage, adding a watertight bulkhead inside the bow, and installing additional freshwater tank. During this work, Istvan removed his wristwatch, not because it was an obstacle at times, but to stop himself from checking off the days like minutes. 
He won much needed support from friends and the industry. In particular, Alex Seal, Seahawk, Selden, Windpilot, Wimpy, Baobab Group, and Bayside Canvas. Puffin was relaunched on November 2017 following a comprehensive two year refit. Initial sea trials took place in Oyster Bay, New York, before she was hauled out again for the winter. Puffin is now painted bright orange and was due to relaunch at the end of March. Istvan planned to use the transatlantic crossing to complete his 2,000 mile qualifying sail and intended to base himself in Southampton, UK, prior to the start. My advice to Istvan would be to delete his Facebook, delete all his social media accounts, and for his personal pages, give control completely over to his wife and not him. I really have the utmost respect for Istvan as a seaman. I think he should write a book. He writes good books, uh, but he is not really good with social media. I did not like following his Twitter throughout the race. I think his legacy would be better preserved through the written word, not through the internet. And uh, I think he's a great, tenacious sailor who never gives up. And that is why I respect Esteban. With the windless days, just get out of Bay of Biscay and it's not happening easy. Subscribe to Slobo Sailing so you can see the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world, like the story of third place Golden Globe participant Uku Randama, who was starving his way to the finish.